Hello, movie patient, and welcome to Film Therapy. I am Brienne, also known as Miss Movies, also known as your film therapist. I am not a real therapist, but I play one on the internet just for this show. And as with every show, I have a guest patient, and my guest patient today is Mr. John Stephen Roca. Is this, is this where I come in? This is where you okay. enter this into frame. Enter. Even though it's been a while, even so. though people already know who's going to be on the show, <laughs> I like to have the presentation of you coming into frame. I like that. Yes. No, it's, Matt, <laughs> Matt Nost cured me of that on the Top 10 show because he was like, I would start the show and say, okay, mm -hmm. today we're talking about the Top 10. And Matt goes, you know the title's on the podcast, right? Then I'm like, all right, fine. But still, the way I like to present the show. So I get yes. it. I get it. We like to do little presentations. You know, that's why we have such elaborate entrances yes. for, for things that we work on. Absolutely. You know. It's, it's all about the presentation. I've been planning so <laughs> many different. I was like, if I ever enter singles for Schmodown, oh, yeah. I have so many different ideas just for yeah. the entrance. I'm like, I guess I'll study for like watching films and stuff. <laughs> you and, you and uh, Stacy have the best entrances. They're fantastic. Thanks. No, seriously. We got to watch them like back to back because like oh, if yeah. you watch everyone's as they go, yeah. I'm like, you can see that we can consistently mm -hmm. have something going on yep you're mm -hmm. always giving the other team can we cuss on this yes you're always giving the other team shit and then also in a <laughs> playful way but also like you know have a st standing for your own abilities as well which i enjoy it's fun as Indeed. a as a guy who's created the outlaw i enjoy watching that with you guys so. mm, thank you yes so if you have <clears> never <throat> watched this show before um welcome this is film therapy here's how it goes i'm going to ask john three questions it's the same three questions every session for every yeah. patient and that is what is a film that inspires you what is a film or a scene from a film that triggers a memory for you perhaps it's painful maybe it's happy mm -hmm. and what is a film that helps you through difficult times john was the first patient ever yes, on this show that's right so we've done this before with him mm -hmm. that does not mean we're going to talk about the same movies However, he may have forgotten what he talked about. So maybe <laughs> something will come up. <laughs> we were discussing before and I was like, I know it's Hoosiers and it's a wonderful life. Yes. But I don't know the third. I can't yeah. remember it. You know, I'm however many episodes in now. Right. So if anyone listened to the first 32. one or watched the first one, <laughs> you can remind what that. the third one was. That'd be great. <laughs> I, I was not a, a unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, all right. So let's uh, do we go like, who, well, who, first, uh, let's yeah. get let's do some little Post sure. chat, as they call it, <laughs> getting to know John, in case you Boy. don't know who John is. These classes are really paying off for you. I they are, it. aren't they? <laughs> Guys, I take hosting classes. I have it I actually it. today after this show. Really? I'll be going to hosting class. Oh, that's great. I've learned a lot. I have a new website, wow. uh, missmovies.net, yes. where you can see uh, it's everything. It's all my shows mm -hmm. and, and where you can find me right. and how you can email me, but don't. And uh, <laughs> I mean, unless you want for a job, because that's really what it's all for, right? And then I have a blog too. I've started blogging. Nice. Mm -hmm. Vlogging or blogging? Blogging. Okay. I do some blogs like on Instagram. You're right. But I've I seen all, those. I've, and on YouTube. But... The Miss Movies Minute. Mm -hmm. yes. And yes. Movie I Missed Monday. Oh, Movie I Missed Monday, yes. That as well. Mm -hmm. You are. You are doing a lot. I'm trying. You're, you're really great. At it. <laughs> I'm really yeah. trying to get out there. I want some jobs. I want to feel. I was telling John before the show, I was yeah. like, I just want to feel part of something. I want someone to want me to be a part of their stuff. So who, I feel <laughs> like I'm you're on the here. couch. I feel like you're on the couch right now. I know, right? I know. All right. So, John, tell yes. us about yourself. Uh, you, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's already off the rails. Uh, what do you want to know? I want to know how, uh, who are you? Where oh, do you come so from? these are new people. Oh, I, well, you if, never the, know. Who, all right, who's fine. Tuning for those, in for the first time and has never seen fine. you ever. For, for those who don't know me, I host a bunch of shows on uh, YouTube at at Collider. At Collider, do I used to do a bunch of recap review shows. Uh, I am now one of the permanent guests on Fridays on Collider Movie Talk. I host one of my favorite favorite podcasts that I ever started, uh, The Cinephiles, with my friend Steve Morris, who's a film professor in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm a voiceover actor. I've been in a number of animated series like Transformers, Robots in Disguise, Ooh, Sophia, Sophia first. first, and I just did uh, voices for a, the pilot of a new animated series, which I think is going to blow the doors off stuff uh, and that a lot of people are really excited about. And my friends are writing on it. Oh, and cool. So it's all we're all working professionally for an animated series. But so you can't say cool. what it is. No, until I cannot. It like releases. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got One it. of those things with NDAs. And I just had a movie premiere for a film I was in uh that i shot two years ago i don't really do a lot of on-camera stuff anymore so it was interesting to go back and i hate watching myself so i left the premiere halfway through the movie no lie 
I just couldn't Aww. do it. I'm terrible. I just can't watch myself. I'm the worst person in the world. It can be hard. It really it is. Can be hard. Especially when the screen is like so big and you're seeing your big fat face the size of an entire movie screen. So it's really hard. Um, and yeah, I'm from originally from Virginia, from DC area. I was in the military for eight years, went to Florida State University to get my degree in acting. Uh, studied in London for six months, which was awesome with a bunch of my friends who are still friends of mine here in Los Angeles, and then came here in 2000, was an actor for a long time. And then about two years ago, Christian kind of got me into going, got Christian from Harlow from the Schmoes No, got me into the podcasting world. Right. And I've kind of really took to it like duck to water. And so I, 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 I like fun. it. Yeah, it is fun. And I wish I could be as industrious and motivated as Miss Movies to do all these extra things to get the attention. But you don't have time I hustle. for that. No, I really don't because I you work full time at Universal mm -hmm. Studios in the Harry Potter land, uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So there you go. That's yeah, my life. That's the the luxury I have is that I'm a stay at home mom. Yes. So it's like, what am I going to do to fill my time? And yes. this is it. Yes. This is what I do to fill my time. And I love it. It's, Me too. It's something that I didn't know, had no idea I'd be, you know, talking to you today and right. doing this and creating this show and, yeah. and all that good stuff. It's a great and here show. we are. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Well, let's get into our first question today. Okay. The first question is, what is a film that inspires you? And I'm hopeful Ooh. that I've seen it. Oh, yeah. But that, maybe it I haven't. Be, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay, too, because this is where I learn. What's a film that inspires? Well, the last time I think it was on here, we talked about Hoosiers. Mm -hmm. It is really sports movies that inspire me or pick me up or get me motivated or get me going. And, uh, you know, this is going to be kind of boring, probably. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I would say the Rocky movies. I mean, okay. you can't argue the Rocky movies. The, right. Those montages, I have saved every single one of his training montages as an MP4 video on my iTunes. So that mm -hmm. when I'm down or when I'm kind of like needing a little spark, I play, number one, I always play the Rocky two mont montage when Adrian wakes up from the coma and she mm -hmm. says, I just want you to do one thing for me. And he goes, what? And she goes, win. Win. And then you hear Mickey go, what are we waiting for? <laughs> and, and that's just the greatest, like, motivational thing. And, mm -hmm. I, I be, and I added some of the Creed stuff, too. Creed is a fantastic movie. It is. And so if you have not seen Creed, and it's something I push Matt Nose to watch all the time, you got to watch Did Creed. Did he watch it? No, not yet. Wow. So, I what? Mean, what is, what's going like, on with him? He said it's a rehash of Rocky, so he doesn't want to watch it. I'm like, it's really not. I mean, did he watch The Force Awakens? I, I should just stop talking <laughs> How dare right you? Now. How dare you, young lady? <laughs> you know, I've learned in my hosting class that you're just supposed to remove the filter. That's right. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> there you then. go. You did. <laughs> so, you're hating the comments. <laughs> come on. No, Rocky Three has a great montage, of course, where, where he finally, like, the great scene between him and Adrian where she says to him, what do we got? We don't we got cars, we got money, we got everything but the truth. What's the truth, damn it? And she breaks him down, I'm afraid. And they have this beautiful moment. It's one of the greatest uh, moments between a couple on screen, in my opinion, mm -hmm. ever. One of the most honest, raw moments uh, where you see her man, his woman, talk to each other in honest ways. And then she, like, he reveals, he puts his walls down, all his walls down, and she connects with him. And she says, you can't live like this anymore. Like, you've got to understand that it's got to be about you and me not about them mm -hmm. and that's so brilliant you know because you he forgot he forgot that he'd he was a pug fighter or pub you know pub fighter you know starting out right. in philadelphia and he'd forgotten because he'd made all this money and built all his riches and it's just doing all the commercials doing all the commercials the muppet show and all that stuff <laughs> yeah and then of course the rocky four montage is a great climbing up the mountain yelling drago which i always yell mance and all these things are great so for uh, me the rocky movies are really the inspirational stuff Oh yeah, we talked about big fish. That's thank right. you, Clint. That was the third telling one. Telling us about. I like that. Clint. Clint's always commenting. Leisure news. Clint's always around right. in the chat, hanging yeah. out. Uh, same with uh, we got a lot of regulars. Randall Sands. Oh cool. Jack Shipley. Oh Jack. Um, yes. Let's say some hellos to some people. Uh, Mayank, I see you a lot. Jeffrey Von Gerp. TCM's in the chat. What? So Turner Classic <laughs> Movies what? is here, guys. How dare you? We'd both like a Whoa. job on Turner Classic Movies. <laughs> Can you hire us, Mark Tordai? I would hire. love to introduce uh, <laughs> TCM. That's my goal. <laughs> I would love to replace Mankiewicz. <laughs> Give it to me that time. And I did see Ashley Davis. Ah, yes. Um, hello, Ashley. So is Rocky II, James Finneran, oh. hello, is Rocky II your favorite? No, no. Okay. Uh, of the Rocky movies, I think Rocky IV is my favorite. I, <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, right. I love the first Rocky. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a classic. It's a masterpiece. Obviously, it should have, you know, one, I think one best picture, but like 
for me, Rocky Four is the one, just top to bottom. I just think mm -hmm. it's one of the most fun films to watch, and the, and it's really powerful. And Drago is so unbeatable, and it's just so so much to it, you know. And Rocky Three is a guilty pleasure, but Rocky Four to me is my is my favorite, followed by Creed, and then the original Rocky, and then because the original Rocky is kind of depressing. It's it really depressing. It so, is. which a lot of the movies from the seventies were. So, like, it's it's a chore to put yourself through that movie until you get to the inspirational stuff at the end. But like for me, you know, Rocky Four is just yeah. powerful all the way through. It's so much fun. Now I'm trying to think. Did okay, Sylvester Stallone directed the second, third, fourth, and Balboa. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Absolutely right. And then I'm just trying to remind myself, yeah, you know, in case there's any trivia he did not questions do five. on this, did not do five, didn't no, do one, did not do one. Um, Albertson did one, I think, yeah, John D. Albertson, I think, did one. I've talked about five, yeah, and Oof. how like it sucks, but I feel like Oof. we needed we needed to see him at his lowest, yes. Um, but then it just stopped, so then we were like, wait a minute, we got to get back, <laughs> we got to push it back up and but then we waited all this time yeah. and i love balboa but um yeah. i feel really bad that for everyone that loved the rocky franchise that for a long time that was it yeah and it was rocky at his lowest well sometimes and, and rocky said and or stallone said this he said that he wanted to do that because he wanted to show that this was that this was possible that you can fall all the way down which is really interesting mm -hmm. and a kind of a bold decision to do with such an iconic character and i'm surprised the studio let him get away with it because he originally was going to kill him in the ring like the script the original script was him dying in the ring in the fight against tommy and Whoa. adrian running in cradling him in his in her lap and then him dying in the ring like that uh, but the studio's like no that's too depressing and he's mm -hmm. like well i want to have him lose all the money then and it's like, okay, you lose all the money because he wanted to go back to the original Rocky. He wanted to bring him right. all the way back to the original Rocky. But the way they did it is they made, like, Rocky would never handle his hand stuff over to Polly. They just made it so so unbelievable that they made yeah. such so many colossal mistakes with it that it, it almost killed the franchise. And the fact that it took so long for it to come back. And I don't even think Rocky Balboa is that good of a movie, to be honest with you, because Antonio Tarver is not that good of an actor. And I think that's why Creed works. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the other fighter is good at what he's doing, and he's an right. actual fighter. So it's it it just works better. Tarver's an actual fighter, but he's not a good actor, and I think that's what kills the Balboa. That's stuff. always the hard part. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the balance. It's the thing. I saw an article the other day that was like, I think it's time for us to bring back dubbing for oh, yeah. actresses for musicals, mm -hmm. like such as La La Land and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Like, it's time to just be like, that's great, you can sing. Yeah. We're going to get someone that really can sing. Right. And we're going to have them do that part. <laughs> you do your part. Because yeah. even in like Mulan, yeah. the actress who voices Mulan is not the same person that sings exactly. for Mulan. Exactly. And it's like, I know that that's cart, you know, uh, animation, right. but uh, yeah. we could still do that. <laughs> like, it's fine. Right. I don't know why people get upset with stuff like that well la la land he said you know uh chazelle came out and said that i did it on purpose right because he wanted him to be regular people and sing that way but i which i totally get but something like beauty and the beast you don't need to have her be a regular person mm -hmm. and that's where this article is stemming from because a lot of people feel that emma watson's singing in the movie is not that good and or not as good as it should right. have been because pedro harris is so fantastic you know which we just recorded an episode of the cinephiles we we talked about 1991's beauty and the beast Steve and I, with our animation ex executive friend, Michael Vogel, who is the executive producer of My Little Pony movie. And he's an yeah, animation I love director. the My Little Pony yeah. movies, yeah. all of them, like the Equestria Girls. Which ones are we yeah. talking about? Yeah, those both. He okay. he, he writes lyrics <laughs> There's on them. three of them. He's like one of the executives. <laughs> yeah, he, he's one I of the executives know. that deals with story and all that jazz. Uh -huh. So he's, you know, he's responsible. He was telling me all the people that were in contention to be hired for voices and like months ago. So I was super hmm. excited. So when they finally confirmed it and signed all those people, I was very, very happy about that. So, yeah. I mean, I'm excited to see Beauty and the Beast. Um, yeah. I just I just really appreciate good vocals. I watched Cabaret yeah. for the first time last oh, night. Yeah, and I was like, oh, man, it's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like the vocals are incredible. I did have a problem with it being a musical because it's I don't classify Cabaret as a musical in terms of how the movie is set up. Because oh. all of the musical pieces are on stage right. in a in a um, in a cabaret, yeah. And there's nothing outside of that cabaret that has music oh. or singing or any sort of dancing. Right. I'm like, how is that not just a movie, a drama mm -hmm. with musical aspects gotcha. to it? So like Sing Street or The Commitment, yeah. Like those aren't musicals, right? They're performing they're not. their songs. They're, 
in rehearsal yes, or in on stage, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily aware. So then I'm like, where does that fall? <laughs> is that correct? It's a valid question. But I believe, and I have not seen the stage version, but I believe the stage version is different in that it does yes. carry over because there are so many songs when I was looking up the information, mm -hmm. so many songs that have been cut out from yeah. the original musical. Yeah for the movie and I was like there they, that must be what it is yeah and I've seen it a couple times on stage with a few friends who've performed in it and yeah okay. you're right it's it's more of a musical on stage and now I'm obsessed with Sally Bowles cosplay <laughs> so I'll be yes. doing that somewhere maybe at WonderCon <laughs> I'm not sure I don't know <laughs> but it's happening this is the thing that I enjoy about Miss <laughs> Movies Miss Movies is a real hard time with like social attention but yeah. she will wear these things that will uh, that will get attention. So it's an interesting dichotomy mm -hmm. when you when you when you deal with Miss Movies when you watch this stuff because she pulls these things off really really well. But then she's really unsettled if she would do it to do it in a public place it's because true. people approach you in mass and you're just like, and you freak out, <laughs> right. which, which I totally I understand. Do. I remember talking to you about the yes. first convention I was going to go to, and yes. I was like, I might be somewhere on the floor in a ball in the fetal position because I'm afraid of people. Right. I thought you were joking. Uh, no, <laughs> and that's then so it, true. And then I was like, I, got, I like saw the line. I was like, I'm out. I can't do this. <laughs> I can't go in there. <laughs> yeah. And here's my my friend who co-hosts with me, the cinephiles, Steve. Mm -hmm. Steve is that way too. Steve has real like tough social, any so like he is a hard time. Mm -hmm. So networking is a really big deal for him. Whereas for me, it's like no problem. But for Steve, it's really a big, big deal. And so that's that's interesting yeah. to explore that because I had my my own antisocial stuff when I was younger, but I kind of dealt with it and got past it. But for some people, it's a real crippling thing. Right. And I respect that. It Mine is more of a uh, claustrophobic yep. thing, like a lot yep. of people in a lot of places and touching me. And I don't <laughs> want that. But like talking to people, yes, I'm okay with that. Okay with like that. I can, I can work that. But you can't handle that Superman, the Batman versus Superman scene where they're all like reaching for him and he's amongst all of the, no, 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 the Mexicans. No, no. <laughs> Get out of there, Superman. <gasps> Time to fly away. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get on to our second question, which yes. is what is a film or a scene from a film that triggers a memory for you? Perhaps it's painful. Or it could be happy if you want to make this boring. Oh, no. I, I would say, you know what's a great scene? Uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, he's uh, saying to, to the people that are taking away the memory, let me have this one. Let me have this one. Let me keep this one. Mm -hmm. But then when they get to the house and then everything starts falling apart in the sand, and that's when he realizes what he's done or what he's do, what what the results are of what he's done, and um, I think that scene always uh, uh, hits me hard. You know, because I'm a guy who, who falls in I fall in love. Like I when I meet some when I really care for somebody, I really really care for somebody, and I fall in love. And so it's really hard for me when the breakups happen to take time to decompress and go through the sadness and the depression and come out of it and you know and and get ready for the next person. But like that scene to me is why we always think, God, if I could just forget this person, I, I want to be through the breakup, through the healing and on the other side of the door. Right. Uh, but the problem is that you have to go through that process so you can understand what happened and also appreciate what the good and the bad stuff was in the situation. And that to me, that scene uh, near the end where, where they have that conversation before she disappears yeah. uh, fully is so powerful for me. And, and I love that. And when, and I guess an extension that scene at the end of the movie where after she's listened to the tape and he's listened to the tape and he's walking and she's walking away because she initially thought she was going to be strong enough to hear the tape and have the conversation with Joel and apologize to him. But when she hears how Joel talks about her, it hits all her really deep buttons about her own issues since childhood. And so when they're in the hallway, she says real nakedly, like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this. And he goes, OK. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And that's what I've discovered. And I, you know, I, I guess we should talk about it. I went through a, a pretty deep depression last week or last uh, year uh, around the Schmodown spectacular time. Honestly, I was, this is the first time I talk about it publicly, but I was four days removed from being in an ER for a psych eval because I had uh, had 30 years of stuff that I hadn't understood were within me come for me in one moment and almost completely wiped me off the earth. And I almost did it. Like I almost did it. And I've talked about suicide on the first time I was on this, on mm -hmm. this. and uh, it was really, really powerful. And it was because uh, 
a dating situation. Uh, uh, she'd only been my girlfriend for maybe two weeks, uh, fell apart, and it triggered something that connected to all these other relationships before that I had never dealt with and had thought it was their fault. Like they didn't understand me. They right. were the problem. But the truth was somewhere in the middle, which is that I hadn't dealt with my self-esteem issues and self-worth issues in relationships. And so I was making them be the battlefield for my own stuff. Instead of accepting and understanding, I was judging and questioning all the time. And no one can be, no one can put up with that like all the time. Right. And so eventually people would always leave me because it was too much for them, you know, because I'd be like, well, what does this mean? Or what do you mean when you say that? Or do, are you really going to be there? And there was never like understanding and acceptance. It was more suspicion and questioning. And it wasn't like, where are you? I wasn't like, uh, you know, like one of these people was possessive. It was more a matter of, I was always afraid they were going to leave at any moment. And so for me, every single conversation was DEFCON 5. And so I didn't realize this about myself. Like I didn't know, sometimes you don't see these things, right? you know? And so when it happened for me, this, this really sweet girl, she left. And of course she had her own issues, which I couldn't see at the time, but she left me and I just went straight into uh, super depression and almost took my own life. And I called a suicide prevention hotline and my friends came and took care of me and they took me to a psych eval. And four days later, or two days later, I was doing the Schmodown Spectacular, which was insane to even survive that whole situation. And I talked to you about it that day, right. I remember. And so those are those things. So when I watch that sequence now, that scene, I understand it now in a different way. Because what he's saying when he says, okay, is I accept you. I'm not going to judge you for this, for who you are anymore. I'm going to accept who you are. I'm going to love who you are, right? right? And we referenced Beauty and the Beast, and when we were talking about it yesterday, that moment where the Beast lets Belle leave the castle, when when she she her father is in danger, right? He doesn't have to, mm -hmm. but he does it because he loves her, and that's what he tells Cogsworth, because I love her, I have to let her go. It's so powerful. And these are the things that I'd seen in movies, and I never got the lesson. And this relationship falling apart the way it did finally taught me the lesson and so it's it, that's one of the positives that come out of it but it was painful i mean the last four months were just have been super painful in terms of you know confronting the stuff within myself and i've been and i was seeing two therapists at the same time so though that scene uh really affects me and triggers things for me but now in a positive way as opposed to a negative right. way yeah uh, I do remember our conversation in the hallway on this and um, yeah. feeling when you were telling me about it. And I don't know if you had told anyone else about it. Not really, no. Um, probably because you know I'm like, yay, depression. Yeah. I'll talk about it with you. <laughs> um, but yeah. I just remember my heart just like sinking into my stomach mm. and being like, I'm like, I'm very glad that that's not what happened. Yeah. And like. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I will say that you are the one of the main reasons that it didn't happen because when I woke up that morning after the fight I'd had the night before um, with her, uh, um, I woke up at 6 a.m. And it was, of course, the morning of Trump's election, I think. So I was already sad about that. And right. No offense to anybody. This is my own personal feeling. And uh, when I, I just opened up Twitter, because that's all what I always do every morning, I just open up Twitter and check my notifications. And one of the notifications, which you which you had you had retweeted a suicide prevention hotline. So if I hadn't seen that, I don't know what would have happened. And so uh, right. I was so and I'm, I cannot explain to you people like I've never I've had depressive moments. I've never had anything like this. Like this was almost helpless, like helpless. And I've never experienced anything like this to this level. And I never understood how deep mm -hmm. depression could really be until that moment came for me. And I know, and I talked, and I called that suicide prevention hotline. It was 45 minutes, and that woman was amazing. She was amazing. She let me cry. She let me talk through it, and she got me to the spot, and she said, it could just be that she's not the one for you, and that's okay. And that doesn't mean that you messed it up or you, or you did anything wrong. She's just not the right person for you. There's probably stuff you need to look at, but it doesn't mean that she was the right person for you and you messed it up. And that was so key. You know, so I thank you for that, honestly. Um, can you take us through, like, what is it like to call a hotline mm. and then the steps from there? Like, what? Like, oh, are yeah, you able sure. To do that for us? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what those steps are, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that other people would be interested 
Sure. No. I've I never uh uh how would I say this? I never ever thought in my life that I would do that. Like I'd always seen the commercials and I was like, I'd never gotten to that point, right? You know, I'd been sad, I'd been depressed, but never been to the point where I was like, I'm gonna do this, you know. And um when I call behind like it was every you have to deal with your own stuff about calling the hotline. But if you're that desperate, and then that and that spoke to me. I wanted to live. I just felt like I also thought it was best if I went because in my mind, I thought I'd hurt this angelic creature with my stuff and I thought I'd really damaged her. But the truth was that she had her own stuff, which I didn't see at the time. And right. if I had been more had more perspective, it, I would have never gotten to that point. So when that moment happened and I flipped open the phone or I uh, put open the phone and I saw the hotline, I was like, I've never done this before. I'm going to try this and I'm going to see what happens. And you call and you're just, even while it's ringing, you're like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be ashamed. And the person picks up. They tell you, they ask you what your name is. You don't have to tell me your full name. They ask you where you're calling from. And then they uh, put everything into the computer and then they run through a couple of things where they tell you what they're legally allowed, what they're not legally allowed, what their training is. So you don't have any kind of recourse with them. And then they ask you to talk about it. And then you have a conversation with this person. And the person, they are trained to handle you in these moments and to walk you through these moments. And I know for me, she was amazing. And it's a blessing from God that I was able to talk to someone like that and, you know, to walk me through the feelings and let me talk about it endlessly, mm -hmm. you know, and let me cry about it, let me get it all out. And then hear what I had to say, process what I had to say, and then speak about it in a knowledgeable way, in a way that made sense to me, and a way that it might, it made emotional sense to me, and logical sense to me. So I was able to um, come out of it, you know? And so, right. and then they make sure that you're okay before they get off the phone. They don't, they don't go, well, I've got another call, or I've got a bunch <laughs> of people on the line. Yeah, they don't do any of that, which Hold, I- please. Yeah, right, which I was really <laughs> afraid of. Right, I think Rodney Dangerfield, like, had a joke like this. Like, uh, I got no respect. They call suicide prevention hotline. They put me on hold. You know, so it's like you, you have these things, you know, where you have worries about it. But if you're honest with what you're talking about, and 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 they will absolutely stay on the phone with you, and they will make sure you're okay before they get off. They like they say, "Are you okay? To are you a danger to yourself? Do you feel you're okay to get off the phone? Do you feel you're okay at this point to move to the next level of assistance or help?" And so they make sure you're all right before they get off the phone. And so, like I said, it, it was nothing but an incredibly positive experience for me. Um, and really changed me. Like it showed me a lot about how, how to deal with things like this. Yeah. Am I saying it's, too much? No, it's, oh. I mean, it's incredible. What happens after you get off the phone with them? Well, for me, I had been, uh, texting my friend who was in Mexico at the time. One of my okay. really, really dear, uh, girl friends, friends who's a girl. Uh, she was in Mexico at the time and uh, she had dealt with me when I, dealt with it two years ago, this like really sad, deep sadness I had. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say it was depression, it was a deep sadness. And uh, um, she called one of my best friends who I've known since college, since like 20 years, that she lives two blocks away. And so she marshaled the forces, like she called my friends and made sure that they were available. And so my friend came over, I don't want to give any names out because these are my yep. personal friends, but they came, my one friend came over who lives a block away. She walked over, uh, knocked on the door, um, I was, you know, obviously I'm in my pajamas and I'm not like in, you know, any kind of shape to meet it, but she comes in the door. And, um, once I get off the phone with, uh, the suicide prevention hotline, um, that she just happened to be there at the same time or a few minutes after, mm -hmm. and she comes through the door and we call my friend in Mexico. And so we're all on a, a group chat on the phone talking about everything. And I'm telling them what happened and I'm crying and they're holding, and you know, my friend is hugging me. And then, and so my friend said, let's take you to the therapist you'd been to in the mid 2000s because i went in the mid 2000s to see a therapist uh, because this friend kind of made me go she was like your anger issues are having they're like are causing problems with your friendships and so i spent three years in therapy um, really really positive years in therapy confronting my issues that had stemmed from uh, being a sensitive kid and my father being a mm -hmm. macho dad and nothing against my dad my dad just didn't know how to raise a sensitive kid like me and i had to confront mm -hmm. that and my friendships completely changed and deepened and were really rich because of that experience. And so um, my, when my uh, friend, she was like, let's take you to that uh, uh, place. And I said, well, I don't, I'll, I'll go a little bit later today. And she's like, no, I'm not leaving till you come. And mm -hmm. so 
she made me go and I showered and got dressed and she was laughing. She's like, I can't believe you showered. You're putting your hair up. You got dressed. You got to put your makeup, put your, your product in your hair. And we're going to the suit. Like we're going to a therapist. And meanwhile, I look like I'm the one that's the problem that has the issues. And so, you know, it was an interesting experience. We went there and, and the lady was, uh, was the head of the psych psychiatric people, the psychiatrist there. And she was like, she does not have to meet with you, but she sat with me for 20 minutes and I told her what happened. And she really gave me this powerful thing where she said, the thing about love you have to understand is when we fall in love with somebody, we become uh, children again. We become babies again. Mm -hmm. We want to be cared for or loved the way we remember our mom or our dad loving us. And so that's why it's so difficult when we go in, when we get into love, because if you, you revert back to that place where you want to be taken care of and you want to be loved in a certain way. And so when you're not getting that, it can be very devastating. And so then that's what she was, that's probably what happened for you is this triggered this thing and you weren't getting what you needed. And so um, that then they, she said, well, listen, we want, we'll, we'll treat you, but you have to go and get a psych eval. And so my friend drove me to UCLA and I did a psych eval there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there's nothing negative about that. Like, this is all just no. a process, right? We right. all suffer through this. I, I never thought in my entire life that I would go into this situation, but it was one day of my life. And I had to confront this thing. And I was very happy that I had a support system to confront it the way that they did. And um, you did the psych eval. And the psych eval, is, it is unsettling because you have to give up all your clothes. A security guard has to be with you the whole day. And, wow. then, and then a therapist, uh, a hospital therapist comes and talks with you. They talk about what happened with you. And two of my friends came and stayed with me the whole day. <clears throat> and I had to talk about all my stuff. And they saw me go through the process. My friends who had never seen me in a depressive state, I slid in. I was like happily talking about sitcoms and memories from college and everything like this. And then all of a sudden, I slid into this really deep depressive state. And it, it scared both of them. And I will say my one friend, Josh, he, uh, well, I don't want to say his name, but like, he's, he said, Doctor, I need to know how to how to help him, how to treat him, uh, because that's not my friend over there. What's happening to him? That's not my friend. And so it was really, really tough for him to see that. And it breaks my heart every time because this is a very deep friend of mine, mm -hmm. and it's something you share so deeply with somebody, and it, it really hurt him. And it, it, and that's why I cry now because I remember hurting him not on purpose, but him seeing that. His love for me was so powerful that it hurt him to see me in that pain. And so, you know, it was really powerful to have that moment with my friends and go through that. And, you know, and then they drove my friend uh, after this uh, psychiatrist nurse, psychiatric nurse talk with me. She saw that I was, you know, uh, not a danger to myself, that I was in a better place. They let me go. I signed out. They offered me a couple of programs. Uh, and then after that, uh, my friend drove me. Uh, my other friend had to go back to work and my other friend drove me to this house where my all my five of my other friends were waiting for me to take care of me for the rest of the night. And they had gotten food. They had ordered food. They, they his, one of my friend's daughters was cooking dessert. Like there was all of this, that all these for, forces were marshaled to take care of me for that whole day and into the night. And we sat and watched classic movies, watched Magnificent Seven and a couple of movies, all of us together, just talking about it and drinking beer and not, not anything drunk, but just drinking beer, having food and people expressing their own, their own experiences with depression, which was really right. interesting too. They were able to talk about it because I was talking about it, you know? And, and it's something we talked about the last time I was on here, uh, Brianne, was this idea right. of like, we need to destroy the stigma of it because so many people go through this stuff and people see me and I'm doing all this stuff and I'm successfully working and I'm making money doing it, but that doesn't matter. It's like something so deep inside you that when it gets triggered, if you haven't dealt with it, it can be very devastating, you know? And so... So then I went home that night, woke up the next morning. I probably should have stayed because I still woke up in a depressive state. And to be honest with you, the next two to three months was battling depression at five or 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and I started to meditate. And meditate, re meditation really saved me. Now my friend, one of my other friends, he recommended it to me when he was going through his divorce. He went through some really deep emotional stuff, depressive mm -hmm. states, and he suggested a couple of podcasts that are meditation podcasts for me to listen to. And those meditation podcasts have been a godsend. And there's also subliminal stuff that you can listen to that you can play while you're cleaning the house or getting ready in the morning. And it kind of, it kind of levels you out. And so those things really helped. And then my other friend who runs a mental health facility or a rehab facility, she said, I don't want you to leave the planet and I would like to help you. And she offered, 
and paid for two therapists for three months to see me. She out of her mm. own dime and through her own business. That's and really so nice. that's what I would say is like mm. a lot of people stepped up and showed me how much they love me without me having to ask. And it was really right. powerful and amazing. And so, you know, that's I was one of the lucky ones, to be honest. With you. Right. Very, very lucky. Uh, it's kind of <clears throat> hard to move on <laughs> no, from it's fine. such it's, a like uh, heavy oh. discussion, but we do need to like, mm. we do need to move. No, I'm just kidding. We do <laughs> need to like break down that, those barriers of depression and yeah. people hiding it because, you know, I, we're all guilty of trying to just put on a face yeah. for people. Mm -hmm. um, and and it helps others by talking about it yeah. and and i want to know like do you have any podcast meditation podcast recommendations that you can give to the movie patients yeah i mean uh what is it mind space everyone your headspace whatever they, everyone uses that one but I, I, my friend suggested something called the meditation podcast and i'm better with meditation when it's guided i kind of because i'm military trained i kind of have mm -hmm. that in my brain now and these podcasts uh, from the meditation pockets, it's, it's this husband and wife, they do it. And uh, they guide you through meditation and they have different types of meditation for different types of things that you're going through okay. and different lengths. Hmm. You know, the one that I really like to do is if I wake up early in the morning and I have an hour, I will do an hour long meditation podcast, which is awesome. It's called a breakthrough and it's really, really great. And you, you just have to give into it, you know, quiet your, quiet your mind down really give into it don't play it too loud and just keep it where, it where where it's at and listen to it and it really does help you know and you, if you make it a daily practice uh, not just when you're sad or when you're down you have to make it a daily practice right there is there is real power in it you know um, and i would suggest my friend emily fletcher she runs ziva meditation which you ha if you haven't checked out ziva meditation z-i-v-a go check that out she teaches in los angeles and in new york she has centers that and she's becoming a global brand she's talked at google like she's really powerful with with her meditation and uh so i would say that yeah, i would definitely recommend those things my therapist recommended like doing breathing exercises yes. um every day and she the last time I went to her, she was like, I just want to know like how your breathing exercises are going. I was like, I'm not doing those, but that's great. <laughs> you will be some breathing, breathing. I mean, I need to do it. Yeah. You know what? There's a girl in my hosting class mm -hmm. that like, she knows that before I go up that I sometimes get tense depending on like what we're doing. Yeah. And I'm like, when is it my turn? <gasps> like each yeah. time like she caught like, cause you don't know the order. It's just kind of like, go up now. And I'm like, yeah. is it me? You know, like just worried about yeah. going up. And so she'll like open up her um, iPhone and it's like a, it's a breathing square breathing box. I think is what oh, it's okay. called. Oh yes. It's an app. I've heard of those. Yes. And so she'll just like open it up for me and like, she'll get it started and like I'll follow the breathing yep. box. And I was like, maybe I just need to get this app yeah. and then maybe I'll remember to do my breathing. And so my therapist will be like, how's that going? And I'll be like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> breathing is powerful. Uh, that's what, is. one of the things it's, it's at the top of the breath and the bottom of the breath where you find mm -hmm. the ability to calm down. And it's, it's true. It's really powerful. And mindfulness is really important too, which is like, if you're really in a bad place or you're really kind of like lost in the sadness of depression, look at an object and start to talk about the object and mm. describe the object. Don't just go, it's a glass, go right. it's circular or it's, it's, you know, cylinder. cylinder. It's got, what is the color? What am I seeing through it? What is it's like wide on the top and then it gets skinny on the, <laughs> skinny bottom. On the bottom, right? It's There's got some lettering on the, on the side. We're describing this. <laughs> glass this right now. We're and not going to show it to you. It, We're just going to describe it. It's half full, <laughs> and not it's, half empty. It's really helpful because it does take you out of that mindset because mm -hmm. you're focusing on something else. Yeah, clear liquid. Yes, vodka. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into our third question, okay. third and final question. Have I said too much? I hope I didn't say. I don't oh, didn't depress anybody or make anybody sad. I hope. No, I, this is a like, learning time. You know, We're yeah. learning. I'm about through you. that. We're yeah. learning about depression and yeah. stages of uh, how you go through getting help. True. So I want to know what is a film that helps you through difficult times? Ooh. Oh, helps you through difficult times. Hmm. That's a good question. What, what did I say last time? Well, we talked last time about Hoosiers, Big Fish. Well, yeah, Big and fish. <laughs> now I've forgotten the third one. <laughs> Shoot, Clint. <laughs> 
Oh, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> it's a wonderful yes, life. Yeah, it's a wonderful life. Uh, do you know what? <laughs> this is going to sound really, really weird. Um, but I <laughs> look. I know people hate me for this, but hop. It's not. It's not in the Transformers <laughs> movies. That's for sure. Everybody's afraid of that. But uh, you know, I love Armageddon. I really okay, do. Okay. And I, that movie, for whatever stupid ass reason, uh, constantly gets me going and constantly puts me in a happy place. And whenever it's on, I love to watch it. I um, can stay awake <laughs> just to hear you breathing. Number one song. Only number Aren't one you song. Smile is while you are sleeping. <laughs> It's good. It's really you guys good. like my impression? <laughs> Got to do that whole big mouth of his. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, no, the other one is Major League. Like if anyone has ever seen Major League, the uh, the, the the you know the baseball one with Charlie Sheen. Or the, those if you have great. Amazon Prime, it's for zero dollars. There you go. Right now, so go watch it. And then Shawshank Redemption. Oh, Shawshank Redemption. That's the answer. Okay. Shawshank Redemption. I'm sorry. I had to get, sometimes I got to process in the moment. Process. Shawshank Redemption is the answer. That is such a fantastic film that always like shows you the spirit of coming out of something, you know, fighting through something. And it inspires me because he believed in himself, even when everyone else tried to convince him that he was guilty. No one wanted to believe that he was innocent. You know, he developed a friendship and there's that great line where him and Morgan Freeman, Tim, Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman against the wall. And he says, I made a decision. He's like, what's that? I said, I got to get busy living or get busy dying. Mm. And that is every moment of your life. You either get busy living or get busy dying. And that's what is so powerful and throughout the movie. And then when he comes out of, comes out of the prison, escapes out of prison. Oh, oh God, I hope I'm not spoiling. What? I mean, Wait you know. A minute. Who's on the poster again? <laughs> Zip it, David. No, it's not that. May West? May West. Who's on the poster? No, Raquel Welch. Raquel At the Welch. end, yes. But May, I think it goes through a few people, uh, uh, like um, uh, Rita Hayworth in, in Gilbert. Hayworth. Yeah, all those people. And so uh, when he comes out or escapes out and it goes to Mexico and Morgan Freeman's journey to get to him, that scene where they're coming together on the beach, so fantastic and so inspiring and powerful and just what Morgan Freeman says, uh, his voiceover, like everybody knows, the greatest voiceover artist ever. And he says, um, most of all, I just miss my friend. And it's just mm -hmm. so powerful. And, you know, one of my best friends from back home uh, is black. So for me, I always have a connection in that movie to him because we're you still see best the friends. the two of you yeah, as I, the character. Yeah, I was his best man at his wedding. And so, I mean, you know, if I ever get married, he'll be the best man of mine. And so it's like, it, it, it's that kind of stuff. So I love that movie. It really does inspire me so much. I need to see it again. Yes, I definitely you do. saw it. I want to say early twenties. So you've only seen it once. Yeah. One what? Time. Oh one gosh. time. <laughs> two times. <What? laughs> yeah. I have only seen it once, oh. uh, but I did love it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's an incredible film. When is it like he says, Andy Dufresne had to crawl through 500, ye 500 yards of the most foul smelling thing to come out clean on the other side? I think I would just wait in <laughs> until my sentence was over, personally. His sentence was never going to be over. <laughs> and, and he was well, being I raped guess, the uh, whole time. I mean, you're right. You're right. There are some hardships there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, prison can be a hard place. <laughs> If we've learned nothing else today on film therapy, film prison can be a hard place. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> What's your next you. question? That's the last, the last question. What really? I mean, we're not we done. Are we? See if there are any uh, movie patients in the chat. Yeah. That would like to uh, in the waiting room. That's something to wait say. <laughs> I would like to ask a question. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? So we'll I'm do happy some to answer witty questions. banter yes. while we're waiting for those because there's a little bit banter of a delay. Oh, is there really? Only because I put ads on the front of oh, this. Oh, you got to make that money. I've made sixteen dollars on this channel so money. far. <laughs> got to make We're rolling that money. in the dough. I'll do some more of my Aerosmith impressions. You know what's great? Clint went. The champ is still here after I yes! said the depression thing. That was great. Thank champ you, Clint. Is still here. <laughs> um, guys, we got something good planned for our next team match. Whenever that's going to be for the entrance, <laughs> oh, I'm sure you I just do. have to say. Yeah. Stacy and I have been working on it oh. for a while. Got some surprises up our sleeve. If we could do magic tricks, we probably would, but oh we're not. Gosh. We we don't know any. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> I get into a box. She saw. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Ashley, uh, I can only say so much because oh, I get in trouble. Oh, I'm sorry. Ashley asks, Ashley Davis, what do you do at Wizarding World? I work in the wand shop, but I'm not one of the assistants helping you get a wand. So okay. I, You're I, there somewhere. I do a role in the wand shop. So if you go and do a wand fitting, you might see a certain somebody there. Uh, you want to read the question? Sure. Or? When someone asks you, this is from David Triana. Triana. Yeah. When someone asks you what movie they should watch, can be any genre. What's the film that first comes to your mind? Honestly, it's always drama. I love huh. dramas. I really do. And and uh, subset biopics. I I mean, I always re recommend biopics. I mean, biopics are fantastic. And. Everybody knows from the showdown. That's that's my category. So yeah, yeah that usually comes to mind. I think I'd have to do some follow up questions, like what uh, movies do you like? Mm. You know, just so I can kind of get a feel, because I'm not going to recommend sure. Alien to someone that's like, I don't like sci-fi. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, yeah, I guess I'd have to know that. I mean, I know a lot of kid movies, right? Like if you're a parent and you're like, I just want my kids out of my hair, I'll be like, <laughs> trolls, <laughs> trolls, put that on. Got, that got 90, 92 minutes. Got that you know, the songs aren't that bad. It's damn catchy. That <laughs> stupid little JT song is catchy. Favorite confined spaces movie? Charles Smith asks. Ooh, favorite confined spaces movie. That is hard because I I tried to not watch confined yeah, spaces I bet you movies don't. because they freak me out. But Alien, I mean, I'll say Alien for all the answers because that's oh, confined. That's good. It's a good point. Um, and it's my favorite film. So People like Room. People do like room. That was pretty confined. And uh, uh, people like Ryan Reynolds and Buried, where he's just oh, in the... I ha I've heard yeah. good things about that one. Yeah. Also have not seen it. I think Alien is a great choice. Um, hell, that scene with uh, Uma Thurman in Kill Bill 2. What, in, in the coffin. Oh my what gosh, a powerful that, scene. <gasps> yeah. That, I was like, this is one of my biggest fears of all time <laughs> is being buried alive. Not ever gonna happen, but it's, it's a not. big fear of mine. <laughs> and here it is on screen. How is she getting out of this? Uh, Ro Randall Sims says, Roka, is there anyone in the Smowdown you haven't faced that you would want to? Yeah, Clark Wolf. I have not faced Clark, Clark, Clark Wolf, and Clark and I have kind of danced around each other and mm -hmm. haven't faced each other in, in mm -hmm. team or in singles. Oh, interesting. So it's just kind of hadn't worked, hasn't worked out yet. But Clark right. is incredibly intelligent and smart about these films, and so it'd be fun to play her. It would be. And who knows what's going to happen between Riley and Wolf if if Wolf wins. That's coming up. Yeah, I think it's coming up. So if Wolf wins, like then maybe. Next week? I think so, yeah. Next I don't week. know. I don't I don't memorize the schedule. I know this week it's <laughs> some guys. <laughs> Wait, who is it? Oh, Josh McCuga. There you and, go. Uh, Jeff Snyder. Jeff Snyder. Snyder. Right. Uh, let's see. Spinning Art asks, do you have a favorite Spanish language movie? Oh, which one did I see? Ooh. Instructions not included. Oh, did you just see that one? I did. That was great. I loved it. I mean, there were, you know, it has the cheese that, ball factor. That will like never be parts, in my <laughs> certain parts that you're like, uh, no, but wow. it's cute. It's like this um yeah. stunt man who's has mm -hmm. a daughter. Yeah. And he can't go back. Somehow he cannot. She's American and he is not from America, but then he gets stuck in America and can't go back. Yeah. Because he's like, how do I get her back yeah. over? And he ends up there. He ends up being a stunt guy. Um, it's really cute. It's a good question. Um, oh, Mixed know. tag team the outlaw and Miss Movies as a team. <laughs> I would bring him down so quick. <laughs> oh, there goes your record. This would be my reaction every time. How do you not know that? Oh. And then I'll know some random yes, yes, shit. Totally. And you'll be like, what? <laughs> One of the things that's so amazing about Matt is Matt knows so much about animation that I do not. That's good. And this guy has no kids. Animation is such a such a thorn in people's side. It really is. And I really want to do like an animation only like yeah. If they ever offer that, I would love to do an animation only one because I, I yeah. know a lot about animated films and all the questions that they've had so far. I'm like, except for the one they gave us because they worded it wrong. <laughs> I'm going to say that they said that the Iron Giant. Yes. The Iron was Giant. an alien, not a robot. Yes. Like and I'm like, OK, uh, is he an alien? He's a robot. He's a robot, right? He could be classified as a robot alien, but I wouldn't just classify him as an alien. Right. You wouldn't. No. So that tripped me up. And I was like, I don't know what the f 
I know this question. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't but know that's okay. Who, it's not is anyone's it Chris? fault. Who does the, I forget who does the. Chris uh, does the questions. So uh, yeah, I would say Chris has some answering to do at times with some of the phrasing <laughs> of his questions. But we love you. Yes, Skaliki, we great, love you. We do, you do a great job. Don't get me wrong. Everyone always just has like their little like, ah. Like I definitely got tripped up on a uh, on the Annie Hall question because oh, I yeah. was overthinking what the question was asking, and yes. I wasn't thinking like, oh, if they had said who played Annie Hall, I'd be like, oh, sweet, I know who that is. Yeah. But the way they worded it was like, what is this question asking? <laughs> I may have had too many shots before I came to this match. Do you drink before you go? In there? I did that one. What? Oh Dude, wow! I was nervous. Uh, clearly. <laughs> so. Uh, trying to loosen it up a bit. I would say, what, Pan's Labyrinth is a great Spanish language movie, mm -hmm. right? I want to answer this question correctly. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I think The Sea Inside is, and Beautiful, <gasps> both. Oh, The Sea Inside yeah. is incredible. Javier Bardem in The Sea Inside and Beautiful are two of my favorite mm -hmm. Spanish language movies. And The Sea Inside is just fantastic. Is The Diving Bell and the Butterfly also? That's French. Okay. That's French. And Diving Bell and the Butterfly is fantastic, too. I love that movie as well. Um, and I know your correlation because they're both paralyzed in the movie. That makes they sense. They are. That's yeah. why I thought of both. I actually bought it on Blu-ray the other day. It was like eight bucks Which on one? Amazon. Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Mm. I have the sea inside. That's that's a one to revisit. That's really powerful to revisit. Have there been other ones? Any other questions? No. I can scroll up okay. if you want. And then. Yeah, Itumama Tamiang is good too. Oh, banter, banter. Life looks pretty intense. <laughs> Favorite biopic for you. Woo! Oh, really? Ashley Davis. Damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm scrolling too far. Damn. Favorite, favorite biopic. Biopic. That would be really hard. Ed Wood is one of my favorites. Um, Jesus. Just because I find tough. that Ed Wood is so fascinating. I and I love that Tim Burton. And yeah. It's, it's just the movie. least Tim Burton-y Tim Burton film. Yes, I would and agree I with that. I find that to be fascinating. I, I love Gandhi. I know people mm, don't like that's Gandhi. Like four hours. Yeah, and I, I, I will Didn't watch it. it. It's been on Encore or whatever. <laughs> that's got to be on your movie I miss Monday. I'll, I'll on. put it on there. Come How many on. days is that going to take me? That's going to take <laughs> me four days. Hours. It's three hours. Okay, only three hours. I, right. I like that. You should see the queue I have right now. Oh, going. I should. I should. I should get upset at everything that's on that list. <laughs> should I bring it up? I'll bring it up. If you want right to, now. sure. Um, um, you know what? Let me get my phone. You talk okay. about Gandhi. Gandhi's well, great. Uh, I also like, um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, 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 Walk the Line. The Johnny Cash one is fantastic as well. That's a great biopic. Um, uh, I enjoy Che, which Benicio Del Toro was in. That's a really great biopic. Um, there's so many that do such great work. Patton is fantastic. George C. Scott. So there's so many great biopics that I enjoy watching all the time. Um, yeah, and the, I didn't get the Bob. The I didn't really like the the Bob Dylan one. I'm not here. That was a little hard to get into for me, but I like that they wanted to bust the convention of a biopic. So, all right, I'm gonna go over this. Hey, all I've right. gone over this before with yeah. Matt Nost. I'll go over it with you because things have changed because I've watched some stuff on the queue. Yeah, and I've added some more things. Oh, Into the Wild is good. I liked it. Into the Wild. Into the Wild yeah. I wrote uh, I, when I had my website Hit yeah. or Miss Movies. I wrote oh, yeah. a review on it and how I went through the stages of depression yeah. watching that movie because it was so incredibly powerful yes, and it was. Uh, frustrating frustrating yeah uh, okay so here we go okay uh here's the updated list let's do it um the apartment which i've been trying to watch Ooh, but it's Lemon. um yeah it's that's tough to it get has into. a short wait right now that's a tough to get into um gi jane has a long wait. I will so give I you that. I, okay, I have great. that on Blu-ray. Yes. I will give you G.I. Jane. Malcolm X, has, Malcolm a, X. has a very long wait. Another great biopic. The Evil Dead, which has a very long wait as well. Oh, The Evil Dead. Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 is fantastic. Army of Darkness. Yeah. It's okay. The, the Elephant Man also has a very long wait. Also a biopic, kind of. Mm -hmm. The Blues Brothers, Dragnet, Short Circuit. Dragnet. Really? The Jan Aykroyd, Tom Hanks one? <laughs> I. That is a closet <laughs> favorite film of mine okay, from the great, 80s great oh my god <laughs> if you ever do it. a podcast where you talk about dragnet i want to be on that podcast okay i'll do it just for you thank god it's friday that's <laughs> hey, when it's I... the dragnet podcast <laughs> episode 67 it's the dragnet we do one minute per episode of the film Dragnet like... <laughs> minute here we go um let's see iron man 2 okay yeah, um, i don't know if you should watch that but all right Jurassic Park 3, which I did Oof. see was on Netflix, so I should probably remove it from this. Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Thor, yes. The Fly, Goodfellas. No, I've seen Goodfellas. This is a rewatch. The Fly is the Jeff Goldblum one? Yes. Or the Vincent Price one? Okay. 
Dog Day Afternoon, yeah, also a one. long wait. Serpico has a short wait. Oh, yeah. So, of course it does. Hard Boiled, The Thing. I've seen the remake. John Woo, Hard Boiled? Mm -hmm. Nice. Good choices. The Abyss also has a very long wait. The Abyss is great. Platoon, Teen Wolf, which also comes with Teen Wolf 2. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, Blue Velvet, Taxi Driver, Network, The Blue Candidate. Velvet. Has a short wait. Oh, the candidate was good. I saw that. Easy Rider, mm -hmm. five easy pieces. Mm -hmm. Kramer versus Kramer, double indemnity. Oh, good. The Master, Punch Drunk Love, oh. Seven Samurai, The Fisher King, The Maltese Falcon. Mm, wow. The Palm Beach Story, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Yeah, good film. Tango and Cash has a long wait, <laughs> so I won't be seeing that for a while. Uh, the Nice Guys. Nice guys is great. That's new. Uh, mean yeah. Streets, Enter mean Streets. the Dragon also has a very long wait. Wow. Sneakers, War Games has a short wait. Yeah. Westworld, because I want to watch the show and sure, I want to sure. watch the movie first. Once Upon a Time in the West, Escape from LA. Oh, yeah. I did just watch Escape from New York, so now I need to move on to that. Uh, Sin Love City, this. American Sin History City. X. Yes. Southpaw. Southpaw, good. In America, Secretary. Good gosh. I've seen White Men Can't Jump, but it's a lot. It's been a long time, and I was like, I don't think I remember it. You got so, so many holes in your resume. It's driving me it's insane. Great. It's, great. it's driving um, me insane. I, I also, Akira, I've seen, but I want to yeah. see again. I think I own it. I should go look. <laughs> <laughs> Spaceballs, I also own. Spaceballs I should get this off of here. I've seen it, uh, but I love Spaceballs. again, it's a long time. The Fifth Element, also have seen. Oh, good stuff. Re revisit Legend, Star Trek Into Darkness and Beyond. Mm. Uh, ordinary people. That's a short. Oh yeah, ordinary people. On Golden Pond, you got served. No. Yes, no. for dancing. You don't need uh, to the game ever. of death. Oh yeah, Bruce Lee. Blade Two, The Craft, Wild Things. Wow. Pearl Harbor. No. I also have. No. Don't see Pearl. Oh. Okay. Mama Sita, man. Iron Man Three, Thor: The Dark World. Okay. Zodiac. Zodiac's and great. The Zodiac, which I worked on. Ah. <laughs> uh, not the same film. No. <laughs> the Hustler, which has a very long wait, and yes. The Color of Money. So when you say very and long, then I have ones that like are not available that I would like to see. Do you watch them? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, what are those? Uh, there. These are the ones that like aren't available in their library, oh. but like if it ever comes available, they'll put it on my queue, which is searching what library for is this, by the way? This is um, Netflix partners they they'll send you dvds in the mail dvds in the mail but it's oh. through a different company oh, a gotcha. partnered company gotcha. called dvd.com okay uh so searching for bobby fisher apocalypto the freshman willow the champ and marathon man i might be able to see willow on youtube do you so. need to see these things on tv or are you happy to watch them on your I'll watch them on my computer or however okay. they can come. I would just like to not have to always constantly pay $3 to see these movies. Okay. So if I, I pay will, like monthly. I will talk to you off air oh, about, about something that you can do. Yes. Oh, I, but I want to do legal things. Uh, <laughs> if it's on the, I feel like if it's on the internet, it's legal. <laughs> okay. That's how sure. I look at it. That's how I look at it. Well, thank you so much, John, for oh, joining me. Oh, thank you. Me. I had a great film time. therapy again <laughs> for a second session. I'm glad that you yeah. returned. Yes. Because people now can see, oh, you can do it again and you can have just different answers. Yes. It's not just a one and done. Mm -hmm. Just like therapy is not one and done. Nope. You keep going back. Keep That's right. Chipping away. That's right. We're all uh -huh. sculptures mm -hmm. and we're being and we chip away to create the masterpiece by the time we live leave. That's finished right. or unfinished it's still a masterpiece you're still a masterpiece where can everyone oh. find you oh yeah you guys can always find me at the roca says r-o-c-h-a on twitter and on instagram every friday on collider movie talk uh on the cinephiles cine dash files on itunes mm -hmm. or cine space files on uh, stitcher uh and we are negotiating to come back with our show uh from geek and sundry yuri and i are, me are meeting with the nice. people over there too because we're going to revamp the show completely uh, so we're negotiating to come back for that. And there's a couple of things on the horizon that I'm working on. One possibly with Emma Fife. So oh, we'll nice. see what happens. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. So there, cool. I've always got shows that I want to do. So Right. Yep. Always hustling. Always creating. Always. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Miss Movies. Uh, John and I will be on the Schmodown panel at WonderCon yes. on April 2nd at yeah. 1.30. So if you are in the L.A. area, come check that out. And we will be in the free for all, the Schmodown free for all. Yes, that yeah. releases in April. Right. I don't know when. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be doing it. I'll be there somewhere. <laughs> Probably crying in a corner. Stop it. Uh, or just drinking. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.
Bye, 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 bye.